it's uh, it's not post-apocalyptic. It's set during an apocalypse. It's kind of, you know, we didn't want to go for the whole uh, you know, the kind of Mad Max near future kind of thing. What we wanted to do was was set it during the natural disaster. We wanted to create an experience that was. Uh, was completely unique, that was uh, completely uh, different, certainly for a racing genre anyway, um, that people could experience and enjoy, that felt more like the, the kind of the blockbuster summer movies that you would go and see rather than a traditional racing game experience. So it's, um, it, it really is, you know, it intensifies the racing, it gives us a completely different environment to play around with, um, and it just creates this kind of really insane spectacle that we hope players are just going to absolutely love. Um, Most of Apocalypse is just, a, you know, it's such a, a bigger game than the previous ones in the series, and it's, if I'm honest, it's the game we've always really wanted to make, and maybe we've just never, I mean, we've never really had the time to, to kind of really deliver on it. I mean, this game's been in development now for, well, just over three years, probably close to three and a half years. We've had a lot of time to think about what we wanted to put in it, and we looked at the core experience players got from from Pacific Rift and Arctic Edge and, and even the original Motorstorm and really the core experience is it's great you know that, that just the multiple vehicles on really crazy tracks with multiple routes that's still fun right that's still the core experience is still fun but how do we expand on that how do we how, how do we take it to the next level and the only way we could do that was to to, to kind of destroy this this city environment to, to really ramp up the destruction, the devastation, the level of intensity. Um, but it, by the same token, you know, it's not just, it's not this kind of shallow experience where uh, it's all about the visual spectacle. You know, that that's intense. That's that's kind of really rewarding and really entertaining for the player. But, but below that, the depth to the design and the actual gameplay is, uh, is much more vast than previous titles. So even just looking at the kind of the base handling, the, the abilities of the, the vehicles and the way they behave uh, offers a far richer experience. You know, they, they, the handling model was rewritten pretty much from the previous titles. Um, not only the vehicles that we've already had, you know, the eight vehicle classes from the previous game, but the five new classes that we've added to the game, they, they all add something completely different. And, you know, having 13 classes in a game, it's a real challenge for us to balance them all. And uh, But it was something we had to do, you know, we needed to to give players more variety and give them more more vehicles to kind of play around with. So, you know, everything, even at that core level of just the, the route handling the vehicles has, you know, undergone more improvement, more refinement. Um, and that's, you know, that's present throughout the whole game, basically. I think the biggest challenge was uh, just the sheer level of, of, of events and destruction going on. Trying to, you know, trying to get that on screen Certainly, even just in two in two D in single player, getting that to work was a real challenge for us. Getting that to work in three D in single player was even more of a challenge. Then getting that to work in four player split screen and sixteen player online. I mean, it's just it's an exponential challenge every time. And once you've once you've delivered on that, and then you say, well, okay, guys, you know, we've got this really amazing experience. Now you're going to have to do that in four player split screen. Everybody's like, God, you know, how the hell do we deliver on that? And you have you have to find a way because if that core experience is so exciting, so intense, so rewarding, it, you can't spoil that by reducing it for for 3D or for split screen or for multiplayer. That experience has got the integrity of it has got to remain the same. So I think that was the biggest challenge for us to make sure that every player of the game, whether you're on a, a tiny standard definition TV or whether you're on this huge plasma panel. And you're playing online with you know 15 other players. It, it doesn't matter. The experience, the core experience, you know, is just awesome. We've taken inspiration, I think, from a lot of different genres, not just in multiplayer but in single player as well. And you know, we're a racing game at heart, but it was clear to us that racing needed to move on and it needed to evolve. And the only way for us to do that was to start looking outside of the racing genre. And so we started looking at, uh, at first-person shooters or action-adventure games, these epic experiences that, um, that kind of really offer the player something very rewarding and very, very rich in content. And so um, that for us was, was, you know, it was really, really key. It was kind of, it was key for us to not just limit the racing experience to just vehicles going around on a track. You know, it had to be more than that. It had to be... Uh, you know, it had to be this summer blockbuster experience that the, the experience that the player has had to kind of go beyond just simple racing. And that, 
you know, it's prevalent from the single player through to the multiplayer. Um, the, the perk system in particular is obviously very much uh, kind of in line with what you'd expect from a, an online first person shooter. But we've we've given it a motorstorm twist, you know. It's not just well, let's just you know take that bit and we'll take that bit and we'll just kind of throw them together and hopefully it'll all work out. You know, all of this stuff was very considered. So when we took the, the idea of perks, it was with a view to allowing players to tune the performance of their vehicles.